Now, we love to think we're not going to be judged on Judgment Day. That somehow we're going to miss the judgment seat altogether. Because I read Revelation, and it's those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life are led into heaven. That's true, but everyone was judged before that book was even open. All the books with the deeds, both good and bad, of everyone were laid open before the Lamb's Book of Life was laid open. I'm going to be judged for what I've done. Now, does that mean I'm going to be condemned for doing bad? No, because my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, we all think that heaven is like it. That's all. It's, it's, it's all we live for. It's, it's all we're going to get from God. It is, you know, nothing else matters. No, there's more to it than that. God says we're going to be judged based on what we do. Look at what he says here. No, not that. That's my notes. Look at what it says over here. He will judge or reward you. Peter's talking to Christians. He's going to judge and or reward you based on what you've done. Does that mean that if you've done bad, you're going to go to hell? Not if you have faith in Jesus Christ, because in the end, those judgment books don't determine who gets to heaven. You know, a lot of people say it's the people whose names are in the Lamb's book of life that go to heaven and the people whose names are in the judgment books that go to hell. No, people don't go to hell because their names are in anybody's book. They go to hell because that's all that's left. Heaven and hell are all that's left after the destruction of the world. So if your name's not in the Lamb's book of life, you go to the default. You go to the only place left. And it was like, why would God send people to hell? He doesn't send people to hell. That's all that's left when we're done. They picked it themselves. So we will be judged based on what we do. Now, so, verse 17, so you must live in reverent fear of him, being talking about God, during your time as foreigners in the land. Let me be very careful that you guys understand this. First of all, fear does not mean afraid. It means a reverential respect. Second of all, are you supposed to fear judgment? Does it say be afraid of being judged? It said fear the Lord. Don't be afraid of being judged because that's taken care of. I mean, condemned. We're going to be measured, but being condemned, that's taken care of. He's talking about live in reverent fear of the Lord during your time here as foreigners in the land. Let me summarize this. Because, well, all right, let me word it this way. Live strong during times of trial. And I'll tell you how next week. Don't give up, even when you fail. You going through a hard time right now? A lot of us are. Have you failed morally during that time? A lot of us have. Don't let it stop you. Don't give up. You haven't failed the test. You just failed a little part of it. Well, yeah, the only way to really fail is to quit. We must stand strong during this time. I love what the scripture says. It says, when you've done all else, just stand. Just don't give up. We need to stand strong during this time of trial, of testing. Why? Because there is great joy ahead of us. That's verses 1 through 3. Or excuse me, 3 through 6. There's great joy. Wonderful things ahead of us. But also because it strengthens and purifies our faith. It makes it stronger. Also because we will be rewarded for our good deeds. I like rewards. Anybody get reward points on a credit card? I like those. That's free stuff, man. I like rewards. I got a reward waiting for me in heaven. It's a little better than my points on my credit card. And I'm going to be rewarded for all the good deeds. Why should I stand strong? I should stand strong because God asked me to, but I can use a little more motivation than that. How about a reward in heaven? There's another one he mentions. Because I'm going to be judged for my selfish deeds. Why would I not do something bad because it comes with a consequence. Make sense? God's not stingy with his motivation. He'll give you everything you need. <laughs> he loves you. He deserves your obedience. There's great joy ahead. He's going to reward you for doing good and he's going to judge us for our selfish deeds. We need to live strong. And I want to do, I want to say one more thing before I close. 
I posted this on Facebook not too long ago, and, and God keeps bringing it to mind regularly. I said, never make a decision when you're under stress, when you're cranky, when you're upset. Never decide anything then. Tired. Anna Kara will come up to me and say, can we talk about this? No, no, not right now. Because I don't want to make a decision now because the answer will just be no. No, we're not doing that. Ah, because I'm cranky. When we're under a time of stress, be very careful what you decide to do. Because many people during their trials have failed because they decided to give up on God. Or they've decided to give up on their relationships with other people. They've decided to give up on church. Or they've decided to give up on Bible study. Or let me just give you this one. Let's say you've been trying to enter into the presence of God. You've been trying and it hasn't been working. You say, this is ridiculous. It's not going to work. I'm going to quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Stand firm. Keep walking. Keep plodding. Let God take you through this time. I love what the psalmist says. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Did he say, I'm never going to have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death? No, he says, even though, and in the Greek, it gives the implication, or the Hebrew, excuse me, gives the implication, while I do it, it's coming. I'm going to have to go through hard times. And when I do, I will fear no evil because I know he's with me. So as you're struggling, as you're fighting, as you're stressed or tired, as your schedule has exploded or your kids are misbehaving, as your family is fighting, as your finances are crumbling, as your, your uh, faith in the, the, our government or your faith in your employer or your, your faith in our financial system or whatever, as all of those things crumble around you, stand firm. Stand firm. Because God's with you. Now, next week, we're going to talk about what it means to stand firm and how to do it. Because it's not easy, and a lot of the answers are counterintuitive. They don't make sense to the human mind. Okay? All right, why don't we close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you that you are with us through thick and thin. That as we go through the difficult times, you're right there with us. I thank you, Lord, that your spirit never leaves us nor forsakes us and that we can rely on you. Father, help us to stand during this time uh, personally and corporately as we struggle with whatever it is that's going on. I, I just ask, Father, that you would give each of us wisdom, that you would give us strength, that we would not only know what to do but be able to do it. Father, help us to make the right choice to stand firm in you. And Father, help me as a pastor here to guide people down the path of righteousness and, and rightness, that we can all do it together in strength and glory. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.